My name is Scott Laser, and I'm the director of West by God, which is playing in this year's Generation uh, competition at the Berlinale. Okay, get whatever you want. Yo, what's up, man? Nah, I'm uh, I'm out right now. I can be there like. Hour and a half, two hours. Um, hi, can I please have a um, right. yeah, you, Butterfinger please. Blizzard? Right, Thank you. you. Oh, you're good, I got it. Um, get a hamburger, no pickles. Uh, just uh, apple juice. You're quiet. I'm not. I'm not like quiet, quiet. Just you text louder than you speak. Oh, it's cool. I hate people who talk too much. Me too. Hi and welcome to the 36 Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and as you can see I'm here at the Teddy Studio in the Myers Hotel in Berlin and today I'm going to speak with director uh, Scott Laser and actor Kyle Riggs and also uh, later be joined by actress Aphrodite Armstrong about their beautiful short film West by God. Um, for now I'd like to welcome Scott and Kyle to the interview. Hey guys, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for having us. Hey. Hey, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. And thank you so much for the film. I, I found it was an incredibly beautiful and, and tender film um, about uh, two young people, uh, Nellie and Dane, going on their first date and, and forming this unique bond. And the film also touches on that human connection while also kind of discussing um, social injustices. Um, my first question would be uh, to you, Scott. Uh, could you describe what your kind of initial idea was when making the film? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, there, there was obviously an impetus uh, that started with a conversation between uh, our writer Julie Blakoviak and and myself. Um, part of what brought us together, Julian and me, was our mutual appreciation for hip hop. And um, you know, we were just texting about some song that had come out, and it was a super lyrical thing. And uh, she shared this anecdote over text message about a. Uh, uh, an experience she had in high school on a date with a with uh, an older an older guy like in his early 20s um, where he played her this uh, this immortal technique song mm. and uh, just brought him to tears essentially and I said to her that's that would be such a great short film yeah um or at least the, the beginning of an of an idea for a short film and this is like at 11 30 or something I'm, I'm in new york she's in la uh 11 30 or so in uh, my time and when i woke up the next morning a first draft of the script was in my inbox <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, she's just she's lightning fast like that and so that was sort of the beginning of it and um but that was really the beginning that was the first step in what became a long and fruitful creative journey. Um, you know, it started with obviously the script. Um, she's from Hawaii. Initially, she was thinking that p perhaps the film could be set in Hawaii. I'm, I was born in West Virginia and I've been wanting to film there virtually my entire life. And I, I saw this as being set in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that was another turn. And then, you know, uh, Kyle and Aphrodite joined the, the project and that took it in a different direction. And it was just one of those things where like every step of the way sort of revealed a new and interesting idea mm -hmm. that we pursued, you know, yeah. continued to pursue. 
And um, every every step along that process um, sort of affirmed our, uh, you know, conviction in each of those mm-hmm. steps. So it's, uh, yeah, obviously it started with, this, with an initial idea, which y- you can see uh, realized in the final film. Um, but it was a journey um, that we all... Uh, got to go on, and uh, I was very, very grateful for that. Yeah, and I think that that really shows well on the screen. Um, concerning those two characters that you have, that you put all that that kind of effort in, I think what what shows really well is also that they are sort of outsiders, both in their own kind of special way. Um, mm-hmm. Could you tell me what interests you in in bringing these kind of two? different ways of being sort of on the outside together? Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it, actually. Um, you know, when I look at uh, Nelly and Dane uh, first before we filmed it, and then obviously afterwards, I recognize them um, from my own uh, upbringing. Uh, I've met many Danes. I've met many Nellies, you know, growing up. And yeah, I think they do kind of represent sort of the each and, you know, uh, Nellie is sort of eager to grow up. And even though she's still very much, frankly, a child, you know, she's a teenager, I guess you could say, but she's, 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 she's has not yet experienced the full responsibilities of being an adult. And, you know, Dane is right on the other end of that and at the, at the footsteps of his journey into adulthood. And I think they each sort of want what the other has in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that was, I think, what we were trying to really re- nail down and right. refine. Um, I will say, too, you know, from a presentation standpoint, I had a lot of fun um, crafting, not just the sort of backstory and, and uh, uh, performance uh, elements of Nellie and Dane, but particularly, uh, Kyle can attest to this, mm. Dane's wardrobe. <laughs> you know, we, we, we got everything from Walmart and Claire's, yeah. which I'm not sure if you're familiar with yeah, Claire's. Yeah. It's like a jewelry or uh, accessory store yeah. here in, in the U.S. But uh, every part of his outfit was meticulously uh, chosen. Yeah. Um, his his uh, ribbed tee uh, or tank top with the open plaid short sleeve button up yeah. the long denim shorts with the belt obviously air force ones the chain the diamond earrings that's a a, a, a very specific character mm-hmm. to me um and something that i'm very familiar with uh coming from where i come from yeah so uh we, we just had a lot of fun delineating those characters and making them uh, as real mm-hmm. uh, and recognizable yeah. <clears throat> as we could. Yeah, yeah. I actually also thought that concerning um, Kyle's or, or, or Dane's wardrobe that, that seemed to kind of come from, from experience in a sense, that seemed to be put together mm. from experience. Um, and actually concerning the, the, uh, the, the whole look of the film, I think that's, there's a lot of of art to it. I mean, you have these, you know, pastel colored sort of scenes uh, at the pool. You sort of have the, you know, the one scene with the, with the curtains drawn, which are sort of almost on fire. Mm-hmm. There's like little details happening in the forefront while the main action is kind of happening in the back. Um, could you maybe tell me what was important to you when you thought about the, the whole look of the film? Yeah, um, so uh, I, I have to give credit to our cinematographer, Taylor McIntosh, who's a longtime collaborator of mine, someone I deeply trust. Um, 
from a creative and aesthetic standpoint. Um, and, you know, when we went into this, um, I was very keen on making every shot uh, a static frame mm -hmm. um, and basically creating, uh, you know, an image where the, the, the action is flowing through it. And uh, it almost feels like you're just uh, kind of a, an objective observer, you know, wa watching this from, uh, from, you know, so the, the camera, I, I think the, the photography is very beautiful, but it doesn't draw attention to its uh, uh, creation, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's not overwrought. And, um, and, and because of that, I think we got the time to really make every frame of this both beautiful and intentional so that um, every new cut, you're seeing something that's advancing the story or revealing something new. Yeah. Um, and um, so Taylor uh, did an incredible job uh, capturing yeah. everything. Um, but then we also worked with um, a colorist named Derek Hansen, who's also someone I've worked with for a long time. And I'm, I'm very selective about what I bring him on to because he's uh, one of the best mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. And um, so I, I, I only bring him the projects that are important to me. And, yeah. and this, this is certainly one of, if not the most important um, of the films that I've made. So, um, you know, I think the three of us, Taylor, myself, and uh, Derek were uh, collaborating together while we were filming and then, and then in post to make that sort of warm and inviting, uh, you know, overall feel of the film. I think a lot of times, especially when it comes to uh, stories, films that are told in Appalachia, there's a, um, a bit of a coldness mm -hmm. to it, you know. Um, there's, a, in fact, there's a there's a series that just came out uh, this past year called Dope Sick, which is filmed. I don't yeah. think it's in West Virginia, but it's in Appalachia, and it, and it is very like desaturated and cold. Mm. And um, and I think what we wanted this to be was yes, this this should feel real and it should feel authentic, but it should also be endearing and warm. And so that was a, that was a big motivation for. Yeah our um uh photography yeah if you and that that is really sort of the the finished product is something that's that speaks for itself it's it's really uh put together so so beautifully and so nicely um just kind of checking right Thank now you. um i think aphrodite has already joined us am i am i right aphrodite yeah you? i see her here okay your uh, your camera's off, Aphrodite. If you can hear us. Okay. Hi. There she is. Hey, Aphrodite. Yes. Hey, pleased to meet you. I'm Hi. Phoenix. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet hey. you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So glad to 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 speak with all three of you. Um, uh, I think we. Um, I I would like um, to ask you, uh, Aphrodite and Kyle, um, what what kind of your first. Um, uh, 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 way of, of getting in touch with the movie was like what what kind of got you um, hooked about the script when when Scott brought it to you yeah absolutely I can answer that first or if you want to Kyle sure sure go ahead. I was gonna okay. defer to you <laughs> um, Whatever you awesome like. so um, when I read the script something that really stood out to me as important and like vital to the script was the location being in West Virginia yeah. and um, just knowing about the way that this country works, the things that this, like could this country being America, the things that America is going through as a country and how that manifests in West Virginia um, really connected me to Nellie's story in particular um, in this area that's being crippled with poverty and the mm -hmm. opioid crisis and something about like being a woman in that area um, of this country just really connected me to that story. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Going off of um, off of what Aphrodite said, 
Yeah, the location of West Virginia is very interesting because um, going back to what Scott was saying about the, the cinematography, you have these shots of a water park with like the, with some of the world's most beautiful mountains in the background. And then it's right next to some old warehouse. And, you know, it's just one of those parts of the country that's kind of ignored and not really taken care of. And then, you know, you can kind of see that in the characters as well as, you know, these young people who, Dane especially, I, you know, when I was looking through it, that he kind of feels like he has to look after himself. Mm-hmm. And um, especially the relationship between Dane and Nelly, I was really drawn to because it's unfortunately realistic. This naive high schooler going after the older guy who's, you know, wrapped up in all of these things that aren't necessarily healthy or good mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. somebody growing up. And uh, it's one of those stories that is very true to life and very grounded and not brought up or addressed. Yeah. And I I thought that that comes across very, very nicely on the screen. Even for me, who who has never been to, to West Virginia, it's, it's kind of, or at least to that, that specific place in West Virginia or that specific culture or uh, place of, of certain problems. Um, um, It, it told me a lot just by kind of following the cinematography and, and following the writing um, specifically, I remember that kind of uh, that that kind of tracking shot when the car drives uh, uh, is, is is going down the road, and and you just kind of have this first view of of the the um, yeah the the background that they're that they're crossing through, um, and it tells you you know a lot about characters sort of in small ways or so, small details. I mean, for example, uh, with your character Aphrodite, there's there's sort of this these small hints about a, sort of a character backstory. For example, in the in the way that she tells a relative goodbye when she leaves the house, that hints mm-hmm. at at certain aspects. Um, could you maybe tell us how how you kind of constructed the character in your own way, if you had certain inspirations? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I grew up in the American South as well. Um, so I, I'm familiar with that with that kind of culture um, of parenting and whatnot. And and when thinking about the film and thinking about like how can we tell this story in pictures, you know, the main focus for me as an actor is like what is she looking at when she's talking to people, you know? It's yeah. it's unlike theater. It's not really about how you're saying it or what, I mean, in a way it is, but uh, it's much more important what you're looking at. Like, where is the focus of her attention? Mm -hmm. Does she even have the wherewithal to look at her relative, her father, Um, or does she not? And and does her father look at her or does her father not? And that sort of is picking at, at, at what that relationship is without us having to explain what that relationship is. So really just the behavior of like, what is it, how often does she leave the house? Yeah. How often does she leave the house and not tell him where she's going? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I didn't even necessarily need to construct anything about what her past with her father is necessarily, as long as I could figure out the behavior of somebody um, who's not necessarily connected to family, blood family in that, in that way. Mm-hmm. And I thought, um, yeah, that, that is kind of beautifully con- con- contrasted actually with, with your character, Kyle, in the sense that we immediately have that kind of feeling that he has this richness and, and sensitivity kind of underneath the surface of his kind of, you know, in, in a sense, tough appearance. Um, how did you go about kind of building up that character? Well... Like Scott was saying earlier, I've met many Danes. Um, <laughs> not that I was particularly close with any of them, but I saw plenty of them in school and also growing up in the American South. Uh, one thing that was important to me was, you know, getting the culture, which was easy because Scott was there, who, mm-hmm. you know, grew up in 
West Virginia and we were shooting on location surrounded by actual West Virginians. So uh, I like to think that if I was doing anything wrong, somebody would have let me know. Um, mm -hmm. But I showed the film to a friend of mine who was from West Virginia and they were like, this is so accurate to uh, the white drug dealer trying yeah. to act tough and street, even though his neighborhood is gravel yeah, yeah. is how they phrased it. Um, but yes, like you were saying at the beginning, you have this sense that he's very much in control and knows what he's about and he's very confident. And then over the course of the film, we learned that that is mm -hmm. very much not the case. Yeah. Yeah. I'd actually like to like to touch on that scene um, because that is, that is kind of the, one, the most crucial scene in, in, in the film certainly was for me um, that kind of revolves around them sitting in the car and, and, and uh, listening to the uh, immortal technique song. Um, maybe m my first question would be to you, Scott, again, uh, what it was it like to kind of build up or, or conceive that scene and also what was it like to, to shoot it? Yeah, I would say, you know, it, it was interesting because um, even though I would say that a lot of the film is um, it's, it's carefully constructed, but it's, it's understated in its uh, crafting, um, there is a lot going on throughout the film. And, and there was a lot of, you know, adjustments, uh, tweaks that we were making to all the frames leading up to that, uh, that final scene. But with that scene uh which i hope he doesn't get upset with me but taylor found a little frustrating um to, to film only because um it was purely on uh aphrodite and kyle um that that was the draw to that scene you know so so all we really had to do was hit record you know yeah. and um and it was beautiful like we were in you know surrounded by the mountains we we're on the uh, bluestone lake right in hinton um, as the sun was coming down, uh, dodging a little, some raindrops here and there. Um, but I'll never forget the face Aphrodite made in that critical moment. Uh, and just having a, uh, give that giving me such pause, you know, mm -hmm. uh, watching it in front of me yeah. and it, it felt so perfect, you know? Um, but, but that was, um, I love how it looks and, and it fits very much in the visual language of the rest of the film, but it was definitely fully on these two here to bring the, uh, the emotion, the energy, everything to that. And, um, and that was probably the easiest from a production standpoint, but definitely I would, unless, unless you both disagree with me, but probably the, the hardest um, or the most uh, that you really had to sink your teeth in to as performers. And um, it was just a joy for me to, uh, as a director, to be able to, to watch it, you know, uh, firsthand like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I, I think um, that, that kind of simplicity in the way it is done kind of puts that real focus on the um, authenticity of the whole scene and the authenticity of the, of the feeling between the male ca and, uh, main characters. Um, so what what is your experience with that scene like uh, Aphrodite and Kyle? Yeah, so um that that scene was definitely like the big one, the one yeah. we were like gearing up to, the one we were um working toward and um I I remember when we were working on the scene just trying to let myself find the mix of humor mm -hmm. in that moment. Um, like allowing that moment to be uncomfortable yeah. for, mm -hmm. for me as an actor, letting that circumstance mm -hmm. into my body. Um, and what I loved about playing Nellie, first of all, the project was a dream to work on, um, but also just like, she doesn't say much. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of what's happening is, is, is her um, reaction to what is happening in front of her. Like, like what is she how is she viewing this moment, you know? Yeah. We're almost seeing through her eyes in a way. And so um, in that moment, I, I just remember discovering 
that there was like a level of humor to it, a level of like a level of comedy almost yeah. um, where this moment drops where suddenly this is not the date that she thought she was on. <laughs> and similarly to what you were discussing with Kyle, how there's this exterior of somebody who's street and somebody who's tough and somebody who's can do anything is in, and is invincible, but is really like a softy on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, Nellie is kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing in a way where um, she's a lot smarter than she plays. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's a, there's a moment where she realizes that um, the sort of power structure and the status between them mm. has now shifted. Yeah. And they're not so much, um, he's, he's not someone that she necessarily needs to dream about beside the pool. Mm -hmm. um, he's someone that's right in front of her, yeah. equal to her on her plane. Yeah. And so yeah. um, coming up on that sort of surprise um, was kind of what, what the work of figuring out the scene was for mm -hmm. me. Okay. Yeah, beautifully said. I totally agree on that uh, power dynamic shifting during that last scene. I think when I auditioned or in the earliest versions of the script, um, that final line at the end, Nellie was the one that says, I like you, and Dane says, I know. But I... I thought it was brilliant when that got flipped around um, because that dynamic really does change during that whole last scene. And uh, with the comedy, like Aphrodite was talking about, that really came from her because talking with Scott and Julie beforehand, there is no irony to Dane whatsoever. Mm. So my goal was to play that scene as seriously as possible. Yeah. It's not funny at all. Yeah. Right. He has no, I know you're not supposed to judge your characters, but I said in during, at some point during production, if Dane was just a little bit smarter, he would realize how much of a loser he is. And right now he just has a sneaking suspicion and that's what you messes him up during that, during that final scene. And going back to the comedy of that scene, I felt, unfortunate because when we were shooting I was paying attention to my my thoughts and my inner life and my point of view for Dane I wasn't paying attention to Aphrodite so I never got to see her performance until I finally watched the film <laughs> and that completely changed the scene for me I thought that the um, the dynamic between the two of one just so serious and the other one just having no idea how to even react to what's going on was, uh, was just brilliant. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty. That's the beauty in my opinion of that scene, because in real life, when moments like that happen, it's as if these two people are living in a different moment. Yeah. This story yeah. for them is, is two completely different it means something completely different to both of them. So that's what's mm -hmm. fun about kind of playing different scenes together is that that happens so often in those unique moments of life. Yeah, I mm -hmm. just kind of felt like I, I, I love that scene because it's just so incredibly well played and, and, and kind of brought together by, by, by your direction, Scott. And just that, that complexity and that, that humor that it brings, it just... You know, there's this element of, of incredible truthfulness and authenticity. And at the same time, there's just this moment of, are you serious? <laughs> um, that just kind of, you know, plays with it. And I, and I found that incredible, uh, incredible to watch. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, as, as you say that, uh, what I'm thinking is I've never actually seen this film with anyone else. And uh, the Berlinale will be my first time seeing it in a, a group of people. And I am so excited to see how people react to that moment. Because yeah. I think probably some people might be like, is this funny? Should I be <laughs> laughing here? They seem kind of upset, yeah. you know. Um, but that uncomfortable, you know, that discomfort, I think, is going to be very interesting to see uh, brought to bear in an uh, in a, in a audience. So yeah. I'm, I'm, that's something I'm personally looking forward to uh, seeing it both on a large screen, which I've also never done, and um, and uh, w with an audience. Yeah, 
I personally think it's going to be a big success uh, if, if it can find its audience in the sense that people are going to um, uh, appreciate that, that kind of complexity and, and open their minds to do this kind of interplay of, of different emotions and expectations there. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Um, I think that's it for me for, for today. <laughs> um, I'd cool. like to thank all of you guys so much for, for being here and for taking the time uh, talking to me. And um, I just wish you all the best uh, in presenting the film at the Berlinale. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun. It's, it's really such a big and beautiful and tender film. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to find its audience. And I think it's going to be a, a big success. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us uh, on this. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure.